What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, I am a staff software engineer, and I don't like drama, and so I am saddened that I have to make this video. However, recently Forest Knight released a video saying that Stack Overflow is full of idiots. This video was really disappointing for me to see, just because Forest Knight usually makes really good videos. I really like the guy, but unfortunately, he is completely and totally wrong. Understanding how to use Stack Overflow properly can really help you out with your career development. And so in this video, I just want to talk briefly about what Forest Knight said, which prompted me to make this video. And then I wanna spend the rest of the time talking about how to use Stack Overflow properly and give you some tips and tricks in terms of how to get the most use out of it. To start out, let's talk about why Forest Knight thinks Stack Overflow is full of idiots. I don't wanna run the risk of having this video taken down for copyright. And so I will leave timestamps to the video that Forest Knight released in the description below. And then I will just give you a real quick summary of what he was talking about. So the first thing Forrest talks about about 23 seconds into the video is a user is asking questions about microservices. They're asking pretty broad questions just about how do you use them, just trying to get an idea of what they are. A Stack Overflow user responded saying, hey, you should do some research. And that kind of set Forrest off. And I can see why he would be mad about that because the person answering the question didn't do a great job answering the question in a, in a polite way. However, the person answering the question wasn't in the wrong, they weren't incorrect. Stack Overflow isn't meant for general research purposes. And we'll get into that more in the video later on, but that's just one thing to keep in mind. Then around one minute and 58 seconds into Forrest's video, he talks about his own experience where he asked a question about Java. He asked, hey guys, how do you actually set up your Java environments? How, how, do you, how do you start up a Java application? And again, this is a low quality question for Stack Overflow. And people answered in the way that they answered the microservices question. They said, hey, you should do some research. Again, not a great way to answer a question for a user that clearly doesn't know what the purpose of Stack Overflow is. But nonetheless, they're not in the wrong and it is kind of weird to call them idiots. Before we move into how to actually use Stack Overflow, I just wanna do a quick disclaimer. I am not defending the trolls. The people who are answering the questions were not answering them in the best way. They could have easily linked to the help documents that say what questions are allowed, what questions are not allowed. How do you actually use Stack Overflow correctly? The first thing is you should understand what questions are allowed in the community itself. You should only ask practical, answerable questions about a problem that you are actually facing right now. When you ask a chatty, open-ended question, similar to the ones that Forrest was talking about, you actually diminish the Stack Overflow community because your question is going to push other questions further down on the top page. You should make sure that your questions are reasonably scoped. If you can foresee getting a wide variety of answers for the question you are going to ask, it's probably not reasonably scoped. If your primary motivation for asking the question is really like, I just wanna participate in a discussion with a bunch of folks and get just a bunch of different ideas about this, that question does not belong on Stack Overflow. It's way too open-ended. Please don't ask that question on Stack Overflow. One thing to call out is that every Stack Exchange community, which Stack Overflow is a part of, has a help document about what sorts of questions you should ask with examples of what those questions might look like, along with examples of what bad questions are. And I'll leave a link to Stack Overflow's version of that in the description below. Also, Jeff Atwood, the co-founder of Stack Overflow, he wrote a article titled, Real Questions Have Answers, and I will also link to that in the description below. It's a really good read. So Stack Overflow is actually one community that is part of a wider community known as Stack Exchange. So just because your question isn't allowed on, say, Stack Overflow or one of the other Stack Exchange websites, doesn't mean that your question is just not allowed on there at all, there's a good chance that there's a Stack Exchange community where your question is perfectly valid. So software engineering, that Stack Exchange community, that's a really good place to just ask general questions about the software development lifecycle. Code review is a good community if you need peer reviews on your code. This is a good place if you have open-ended questions to ask as well. Then you have communities like Server Fault, Ask Ubuntu, Android Enthusiasts, DevOps, Software Recommendations, Code Golf personal finance and money, and then really dozens more, like the list goes on and on. There are a ton of Stack Exchange communities out there, so you can probably find the one 
that will match up with your question the best. So we talked about what questions are not allowed in Stack Overflow. We also talked about some of the alternative Stack Exchange communities that you might want to look into. So now let's look at a couple examples of good questions on Stack Overflow. Is it possible to pass listeners via bundle an alert dialog fragment on Android? The method onPostExecute is never used locally with async task. Event2 event-config.h file not found. Segmentation fault when using a shared pointer for private key. Cannot connect to MongoDB because of wrong URI. All of those questions also have full descriptions. They include code snippets where code snippets are necessary. They include stack traces where stack traces are necessary. And this really helps the other person trying to answer your question give you the most accurate answer possible. Then when you are asking questions, make sure that you're keeping up with the comments and answers that are coming in. If there are comments asking for more details about your question, please be sure to give them more details. They're just trying to do their best to help you out. Then once an answer is provided that solves your question, be sure to accept that answer. This not only helps the person answering the question, they get a little bit of reputation bump from that, it also helps people in the future that are Googling the exact same problem you're facing understand what answer actually solved the problem. Also, accepting a answer is a lot like smashing the like button when you really think about it. And I don't think I've asked for that yet. So if you haven't done that for this video yet, please be sure to do that. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So now that you understand a bit more about how to ask a good question, the next thing that you should try to do on Stack Overflow is answer at least 10 questions yourself. It's impossible to understand what the question answerers are going through without doing it yourself. I didn't do this when I first started using Stack Overflow. I was fortunate enough that I was working in IT, so I was pretty used to people asking me really out there questions that were really difficult to actually answer without me asking for a lot more details. However, I still didn't fully understand what it was like answering questions until later on in my career, I decided I'm just going to answer some questions for an hour, once a day at work. I did this over the course of about a month or two, and it really helped me understand what sorts of questions are being asked on the site, and also understand why some people just might get frustrated when they have really vague questions. This experience left me even more impressed by the people who have more than 50,000 reputation on Stack Overflow. I'm currently sitting at 1,472 reputation on Stack Overflow, which puts me at the top 25% of that community. I say this not to brag because honestly, that number doesn't sound that impressive. And to be honest, I haven't really been answering questions on Stack Overflow for about two years now. But instead I wanted to point out how few people are actually answering questions on Stack Overflow and actually getting reputation on the website that someone who spent just two months spending an hour a day answering questions was able to get to the top 25% of the community. Stack Overflow is a community built around a specific purpose. Essentially, your code isn't working and you need someone to help you out with it. Stack Exchange has many other communities. Some of those are much more tolerant to open-ended questions. And really the great thing about the internet is Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange aren't the only places that you can go to ask questions or find a sense of community. You can use Twitter, you can use Discord, link to our community in the description below. There's also Slack, you have Reddit and all of its subreddits, YouTube, TikTok, and many other websites. So when your question isn't right for the community, please just respect the community and understand that even though your question isn't good for that community, there is almost certainly one out there for you. So that's it, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, and I will catch you in the next one.